Welcome everyone to SQL Friday. This is SQL Friday number 43. I want to start with saying that last week uh, we had to cancel because the, the speaker didn't show up. And it turns out he did email me the day before and said that he was feeling ill, so he couldn't do it. So it was up, it was on me completely that I hadn't seen the email. So no shame on the speaker from last week. It's all on me. Anyway, today we have uh, Ronan Ariely, who is connecting from Israel to SQL Friday. And uh, Ronan is going to talk about SQL internals, the physical table structure under the hood. And I really look forward to it. Ronan has promised that this is going to be a very demo intensive session, which I absolutely love. So welcome to SQL Friday, Ronan. Thank you. It's great to be here. I will leave the, the introduction of who you are up to you because you will do it much better than me. Uh, that's OK. Uh, just tell me when uh, to show my screen. And, uh, you can take over. As uh, when you're ready. Okay, so let me share my screen. And I see the screen share. Okay. So, uh, Magnus, can you please confirm that you can see my screen, my camera, and that you can uh, hear me well? I hear you well, I see your screen. Well, if you have the SQL Friday picture on your screen. Yeah, I see your yeah, screen and I hear you well. I hear you yeah, perfect. Let's take it to the next slide. Okay, so we can start. Uh, good morning, good evening, and good day to all. And welcome to the internal session about the physical structure of tables. I want to present a simple question so you can ponder about your answer while I will introduce myself. In those two queries, uh, I create tables with the same columns, but in a different order. My question to you is, do you think that the order of the columns is important? For example, can it be that uh, one table will be twice the size of the other table uh, when we will insert the exact same data to the uh, tables? Uh, if you're brave, you can use the chat and write your answer. If uh, not, just think about this situation while I will continue to speak. So uh, today we will discuss simple row store tables, and we will focus on data that is stored in line. In addition, we will not discuss stress columns. This means that the server tweets the row is one entity. We do not have time today to dive into the structure of the rows on the disk. This is a different uh, lecture. Today we focus on the structure of the table, but I do want to give you just some uh, notes. The data of the columns is stored in two groups. In one group, we have all the data from all the columns which are fixed length size, one after the other and in a different location. In the record, in a second group, we have the data from variable length columns. So physical order does not necessarily fit the order which we created the columns. Here are some common uh, answers which I picked up in the forums. Uh, feel free to read the uh, answers and select your answer to the question, is the order of columns important? Now, I want to clarify that by important, I mean for performance. For example, can the order impact performance when we are using the table in the future? Or uh, is it possible that using a different order, we might encounter errors while we will not uh, see in the other table when we execute the exact same query. We can split all the answers into two groups. All the answers which uh, I collected that say that the order is important came from developers. Their main interest was the order that came, the columns return 
from the query, for example, when we use select tar. In this case, the columns we tear in in the order that we created them, but this is not relevant to performance. In the other side, we have answers which were given by expert DBAs. This include, by the way, a Microsoft Data Platform MVPs. Uh, this include top supporters in the forums, and even uh, one of this quote came from someone with almost a million reputation point at Stack Overflow. So, what is your answer? Is the order of columns important? I think that uh, this is a good time to present myself, very short. Uh, my name is Ronen Arielli. I'm a senior uh, consultant and an architect I work in the field of application developing and data platform. Uh, and during this uh, session, I will dig into the internals of SQL Server. Internals mean undocumented, what we have behind the skin. Uh, those type of uh, lectures uh, are level 500, uh, which usually, usually uh, point to the top advanced users. This session is pure demo intensive session. The only slides which I have are the introduction and closing with summary and some tips. Uh, if you have questions during the uh, session, please use the chat. Feel free to ask. Uh, Mangus, uh, can you please follow the chat since I cannot uh, do it using the uh, during the presentation? Absolutely. Uh, please. I will. Inform me if there are questions. You can interfere me from uh, time to time. Absolutely. Okay, so that's it. Let's go straight to the demo. For the sake of the lecture, I will create two new databases. All live, and now we can start. So let's examine the question about the order uh, of column. I have a simple a demo. I will not tell you what I execute it here, but in general, I create a table and uh, I execute several queries on this table, including inserting 10,000 uh, rows to the table. Let's execute the script as it is. Okay, you can notice that uh, the data in the table is stored inside about 5,000 ranges. And the total size of the database after I inserted all the uh, rows is about 144 uh, megabyte. Now check this out. I only changed the name of the database. We created two, two databases and I will change the order of the column. This is all that I'm doing. I do not change anything in the script. And let's execute it again. Wow. Did you expect it to get this? I only changed the order of columns and now the data stored in twice the size. We have more than 10,000 pages which are used for this uh, data. And you can see that the database size is almost twice the size than in the first execution. We have now a database of 272 megabyte. And this is not all. Obviously, I will explain what I did here in, in the end of the lecture after we will understand what is happening behind the skin. So let's see another example. I'm doing about the same. I create a new table and insert some data and uh, execute some queries and everything is working okay. Now, I only change the order of the column. I do not even change the database, just drop the table and create it again. I change the order of the columns. Oops, how can it be? I only change the order of the columns in the created table, and now we have an error. Now, uh, the error actually can give you the information. 
about what is the reason here and what I did down there in the script, but at this time we will not explain it. We will go over to learn what actually SQL Server used behind the screen and what is the physical structure of the table. But those two uh, demo give you the reason to stay here in the next uh, 50 minutes. So let's start. Okay, first of all, we need to understand that uh, SQL Server manage a hidden layer. I call this a physical layer. And what we are using is a logical layer. It's not what really SQL Server use internally or not fully. Let's say, for example, I create a simple table and all those queries which you familiar with are only using the logical layer, select from table, using system tables. Those are documented system tables, using tools, building documented tools. All this, it's only the logical layer. In order to examine what we have behind the screen, we need to move to the undocumented world. So, um, in order to examine the physical structure of the table, I will use two undocumented entities, the system internal partitions. You will not find any documentation about it, and the system internal partition columns. Uh, to make our life faster and simpler, I will create a function uh, that gets input, a name of a table, and it return uh, as output uh, all the information that I need for the lecture about the physical structure of the columns uh, using this uh, of the table, sorry, using those two uh, uh, tables. Okay, so let's create it. And after I will create a table, I will examine the physical structure of our new table. Okay, so what we have here, what is the function return? Uh, first of all, we have the object ID. This is the object ID of the table that we have just uh, one, uh, asked the function to give us the information. Index ID, if we have index, at this time we didn't create any index. Partition number, again, this table does not have partition, so we have only one. Column name, very simple, and we start with what interesting us. This is the logical layer. So in, during all the uh, session, follow the logical order, and this is the physical order. Usually when we create a new table, the logical order and the physical order are the same. And this is what confuse people and make people uh, uh, make a mistake thinking that this is always the same. As we will see in this session, those are not always in the same order. Uh, max in row length. This is the size that we have inside the record. Uh, as you probably know, SQL Server can store data in the record, but it can also store some big data like uh, NVARCHAR max outside the record. So the part that is inside, which is relevant to our uh, session, is uh, the max in row length and the total size, in our case it's the same, this includes the data that is outside. Key ordinal gives us the order of the key, if we will have a, a key, primary key for example, uh, and this is the most important for today. You remember that I told you that SQL Server store the data in two separate groups, so all the positive numbers that you see here, are the information of the uh, fixed size data types. In our case, we have three columns, and this is the location of where the data, the fixed data actually start. So in this case, our first column start after four byte. Why? First four byte is for headers. Our second column, the fixed size column, start after byte eight, 
and the next one start after byte 18. You can see that this is consistent with the information of the lens. The first column lens is four. It started four, so the next one will be four plus four, it will be at eight. Yeah, that's consist. The second column, it's eight byte. So the next one will be at eight plus 10, 18. This is the most important for today. And what is the negative? The negative value gives us only the order of the variable lens uh, columns. So if we will have uh, more than one uh, variable lens column, we will have minus one, minus two, and etc. Uh, all the rest is not so important. Is uh, nullable, is dropped, and more information about the columns. Now, what I will do during the session, I will uh, build a table, I will create a table, and then I will change it, and I will examine how uh, the action that uh, changed the table actually changed the structure behind the skin. Uh, so let's start, we will create a new table. And first of all, let's see what happened when we add a primary key. So again, I'm using the function that uh, I just created before. I will check the structure before. I will make my change. In this case, I add a primary key and I will execute again the function in order to see what we have after. So we have the before and the after. And if you will notice, the only change that we have here is here, the key ordinal change from zero to one, but the structure is basically the same. We have four a column each row here represent a column in the physical structure, and there was no other change in the structure. Let's uh, revert it. Uh, let's remove the primary key, and when we remove it, you see that the structure is exactly like we started with. The only change was that this is zero again. What will happen if we will add a primary key on multiple columns? And now I will not use only the first uh, column. So I, I will create a primary key on two columns. Now we can see two columns that we created the primary key move to the beginning. You see that the logical order is not the same as the physical order. Why? Because uh, if we have a table without a clustered index and we will create a primary key, SQL Server automatically will create a clustered index for us, for us, and this will be hidden action. Uh, when we create a clustered index, as we will examine uh, in the next demo, uh, SQL Server actually need to uh, sort the columns in the web code itself. So this means that the uh, server actually create the table from a uh, start. It copy all the data to a different location. And those are the two columns that we see the change. Okay, let's see what happened when we actually create a cluster of the index separately, not as part of as the primary key. Again, I start with a new table. I insert data. Remember the data that I insert, not just because I want you to remember my name, uh, but I want you to remember the order of the columns here. Uh, so uh, I create a table, I insert uh, this information, and uh, now I want to uh, change the table by creating clustered index. Before I do this, I want to uh, show you two more uh, undocumented tools. Those are more uh, common and known uh, in the expert community. The first one called, uh, it's a command called DBCC IND. This command gives us the information about which pages in the disk uh, store the data of the entity. In our case, the entity is the table. So let's find the pages 
which are related to our table. What interested me is this one, the page that include the data itself. Let's copy this, put it here so we will remember it for the next demo. It's important. And now we will use another uh, undocumented command called DBCC page. DBCC page get as input the number of the page. Now we know which page we want to examine. And it gives us the information about this page, including the actual binary data, the zero and one that we have on the disk. So let's examine our page. OK, uh, this, by the way, is internal tools that was developed uh, by Microsoft uh, developer. I think it was developed by uh, Paul Rendell uh, for internal use. Uh, when we go to Microsoft and say, oh, we have a problem with the database, uh, we have, a, I don't know what, we need to restore something, we don't have uh, any uh, backup, don't tell me that this is your case. Uh, so Microsoft have some internal tools, and this is what we are using in this uh, session. Okay, so what we have here. First of all, this tool returns some information about the headers of the uh, page. And what interesting us is that it returns the information about the record that are stored in the page itself. In our case, we have only one record that we examined. This is slot one, and what we see here this is the actual binary value on the disk. Uh, instead of uh, using 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, and etc., uh, the value is presented in hexadecimal, but this is the 0, 1 as it is on the disk. So uh, this will return us uh, each 20 uh, bytes of the data on the disk in a separate uh, line, just to make it more readable. Uh, the first information that it gives us is just uh, a number uh, that tell us, oh, now you examine the uh, first 20 uh, byte. Next, it tells us, now you examine the uh, bytes from byte 20. This is 20. If we will go, I think that I open it in advance. Uh, if not, I will uh, skip it. Uh, OK, here. If I will check what is this value, this is simply a hexadecimal value of the decimal value 20. This simply tells us that now we examine the data that start from byte 20. And if I will put the next number, so this tells us we start uh, to examine the byte from 40. OK. And here, as I said, this is the data itself. At the end of each line, this tool also presents us an attempt uh, to convert the data, the binary data, into a string. In our case, we are using a string data type. So it succeeds it succeed to show us the data in a readable way. But if we will use other data types, uh, this tool will not be able to present us the real data. Okay, what I want you to remember is that, that this information in the disk actually uh, store Ronen before Ariely. The Ariely is in the next column. And now we can start to add a cluster index and examine what happened. OK, so first of all, we can see that if the cluster index is not created with unique property, then what happened is that we get another column. You see that in the physical structure, we have now five columns. What is this column that was added? This is the unique identifier. This is a hidden column. A simple user do not even know that this is exist in our database. It cost a, a size. In this case, you see this is four bytes uh, of data. Uh, the uh, physical 
order was changed when we created the store index. You can see that now the logical order does not fit the physical order because the cluster index, the um, column that related to the cluster index, will come in the first position after the unique identifier in our case. So those two uh, columns are related to our index. And let's see what happened behind the skin. Uh, you remember the value that we had before? This was the page that the data was before. Actually, it's the same like in my, no, it's not the same. Uh, now let's see if this is the same now, when I will check what happened after we created the cluster of the index, and voila, it changed. As I said, when we create a cluster of index, uh, this actually create a new place for the data. SQL Server work a lot. This is very intensive uh, action behind the skin. It actually move or copy all the data to a new place. And in our case, all the data was moved to this page. And if we want to examine what we have in this page, let's execute this. We can go to the data itself. And you can notice that the order of the column changed. We had Ronen before Ariely before, and now we have Ariely because this is the uh, column that in, uh, we created the index on it. Uh, and let's uh, drop the cluster the index. We want to go back to the original table structure if we can. What do you think will happen? Notice the structure. It stayed the same. We still have five uh, physical columns and not four as the original. Why? Because SQL Server want to work fast for this moment. Uh, and what it did behind the screen, it simply marked this as a not needed as cluster, but it did not delete any data, it did not de uh, do anything on the table itself, only on the metadata in this case. So the hidden, till, uh, the hidden column is not removed and we are stuck with this extra data in our table, which most people do not know exist. What happened if we will work with non-cluster of the index? This is more complex. Let's add a non-cluster index and see what we have. So now we have two more uh, columns in the physical structure, and you can see that those columns have a different index ID. This makes sense. <clears throat> When we create a cluster index, the data is not really stored in the same record, in, a, in the same place. This is a separate place. So it's not like creating a cluster index, which is changing of the table itself. This is a separate place, uh, which uh, include in our case two columns. Why two? One column it's a column that we created the non-cluster index on this column. So obviously it's need to be there. What is the other one? The other one is the a column identifier, the unique identifier from the cluster index. So behind the skin, this is what we get. And again, we can drop the non-cluster index, and this clean the table structure because we said the non-cluster index is not part of the table, so SQL Server can mark it as deleted. It's not really deleted; it's deleted. It's still there uh, until we will uh, rewrite on the same place. But you can see we got a clean table. What will happen if we will create a, a, a non-cluster index on multiple columns and we will use include? So for this demo, I will first create a cluster of the index. Uh, you remember that I removed, the, I dropped the cluster index before. The cluster index will be on this column like it was before, so it will not change the order. And then I will create a non-cluster index on those two columns, and I will use include on this column. And let's examine. Okay, so 
we already know that nothing changed in the a table itself. We need to examine what happened in the non-cluster index. So first of all, we see that we have the two columns which we created the non-cluster on the on those columns. Obviously, we have the unique identifier which is taken from the cluster index. We must we must have a connection, a pointer to the real place of the data. And we have the information of the column that was included. So basically we need to remember that for each column in the index that we created, we will get another column in the physical structure. And uh, we will also get a column for each column that is included to the index and for each column which is related to the cluster of the index. Let's create a key, a primary key, but this time I create a primary key after we already have a cluster of the index. And you can notice that this did not change the order of the column. This is a primary key which is not creating behind the skin a clustered index. And we created this on multiple columns, so we can see the information uh, in the column of is a key. What happened if we will try to rebuild the index? Will it uh, help us to clean the table? Uh, from all those extra uh, columns behind the skin, the physical structure of the table, let's try it. And the answer is no, not just that it did not clean us the table, it actually stay as before, and you can see we still have seven physical uh, columns behind the skin. Uh, Feel free to be a stem. Uh, if you have questions, uh, ask them. Uh, I will go uh, through uh, several more uh, samples just to uh, to say that I covered it. Uh, so let's say uh, add change tracking for the table. In order to add change tracking to the table, I need first of all to enable it on the database itself. And now I can enable it on the table. So we alter the table and add it. And what changed here? Another physical column was created behind the skin. We now have eight physical columns uh, already. We can play with a uh, variable lens and fixed lens. A change between them and see how this uh, behave behind the skin. It's very interesting and unexpected. Let's create a new table. And now what I'm doing, I change the column from fixed data type to variable data type. Okay, so it was a char before, now it will be var char 20. This is what we had before. This column was in the position 12. And the leaf offset was 12. What happened to this position? It was marked as a, not in used, but nothing happened behind the skin to this place. Uh, this is like dropping the column. And what the server did is added a new column, uh, which is now in the variable lens uh, group. It had to do this uh, action because we told you that uh, we have two groups, the fixed data type and the uh, uh, variable data types are not in the same place in the record. So when we change a data type from this group to another, SQL Server must actually create a new column in the other group. But you can notice the leaf offset that it's the same as before. We have a new column which type is a variable lens 
uh, we have a diff offset of two. It's at the end of what we had before. What will happen if I will change the size of a variable lens column? Now, if it was a physical meeting, uh, you know, I could see you, then I would uh, give you time to actually answer this yourself. What do you think that will happen? But think about uh, this question. What will happen if I will change the size from 20 to 100, but on a variable lens column? And the answer is, Nothing changed except the property in the metadata that says that this is now 100 bytes. Why not nothing changed? Because this is a variable data type. So this is uh, organized as a variable. It can be any uh, size for the uh, metadata. All we need to say to the server, oh, okay, this is now, uh, give us the option to store 100 bytes instead of 20, but it is in the same position and it was done in place. What about decrease the size? I will now decrease the size from 100 to 20, and you can expect that it will behave the same, nothing will change, because we only need to change this back from 100 to 20. This is a variable lens column. But SQL Server always like to surprise us. This is not done the same, and this is the, uh, probably uh, the only uh, place in the session that I don't know why Microsoft uh, team uh, actually developed it in this way. Why they prefer to do it like this. When we change the data size to a smaller size, the server actually use like dropping the one before and it create another place. So you see, we have the one before and it was 100 and it's marked it as null, it's not in use. And instead it create a new one at the end of the data lens uh, group. I have a question in the chat from uh, Mate Farkas who is asking uh, what, what would happen if the table contains data in the column when you, when you change the sizes? Date, date is a fix. Data no, the data. If if, uh, if the Varshar column had, or uh, yeah, if the Varshar column had any data, because now it was empty, right? You didn't put any values in it. So if so if it wouldn't you be ask about daytime data type. No, not daytime. It's uh, it's just asking if if there is data in the uh, in the column that you changed the size of. So right now, all all your Varshar columns are null. Uh, and you didn't uh, put any values into them. So would it make a no, difference if you actually have had values in the in the columns is, that you change okay. size? Of? I, I will uh, show this uh, in a few demo and focus on this, but in general, this is the structure of the row. All the rows in the table must have the same structure. If I will add data or if I had data before, the behavior will be the same. If a SQL server had to do a change in place, so no, nothing changed. The data is in the same place. So every time, this is what you need to uh, listen when I said that the action was in place or it was in a different uh, position. If the action was in different position, this means that the server needed to actually move the data. It actually not move the data, but copy the data. OK, yes. so it's not important if we had data before or not. And in this case, we do have, we have one column, we have one row. When I created the table, I added one row. Uh, I always use insert, or almost always I use insert in the demo when I create the table. So we will have one row, for example. OK? okay. Yep. And uh, let's see what will happen when uh, I alter uh, this is a <laughs> this is very important to understand the next demo if you are using SQL Server 2019. In this demo, I will change the data type from nvarchar into varchar. 
Why this is important in 2019? In 2019, for the first time, we have a full support for a NTF 8. This is, by the way, uh, was presented in the Ignite uh, in 2019 by me. I had the honor to present uh, the new feature in the Ignite, uh, so uh, you can understand that I really love this feature. And uh, this is very common action that you will do uh, when you will move to SQL Server 2019. You probably, in a lot of cases, want to change the Envar char which is uh, encoded in UTF-16 into the new option of using Vulture, which is encoded in UTF-8. So let's examine what happened when you will do it without understand what happened behind the skin. So I create a new table, and now I change this column from nVarChar to varchar. And we can see that we have another a new physical column. When I'm talking about physical column, I'm talking about the information in the metadata, not necessarily information in the disk itself. Uh, but here we will see how strange this behave. So first of all, you can see that uh, the position before was marked as null, not in use in our case and a new data, a new uh, column was created at the end of the variable uh, lens, but this column now is a uh, varchar. So it behaves exactly like dropping the column and adding another one. I want to show you what happened behind the skin. Uh, in the disk itself, the data itself, you remember that we have DBCC I and D. Let's check which page include our data. I will use it here. And let's go to the data itself. And this is amazing. You see the data itself? This is the data in the binary, in the hexadecimal uh, value. It's a bit hard to read, but let's use this, the information. You see the data here? You see r.o.n.ea. This is the word Ronen. This is the old data. We uh, change the column from nvarchar to varchar. What happened behind the skin? We have the old data here and the new data in the varchar. So the size of the table increased, and we don't even know about this when we are using SQL Server as a simple users. This is all hidden. Those are hidden columns, but the old data, the nvarchar data, is still there in the disk, and it will continue with us. Uh, for, uh, forever, if we will not uh, maintain our table. So remember this, this is very important. If you are moving to SQL Server 2019, don't do it like this. Listen to this uh, session and we will need to maintain our table, as I will explain in a few uh, demos. Uh, okay, so we can go to our next uh, slide. What is the time? Okay, uh, we don't have a lot of time. Uh, actually, if you want, I can continue the session uh, for several hours. I have more demos uh, prepared here in the more, but we don't have more time. Uh, I want to uh, go uh, through some more demo. First of all, how partition uh, uh, partition the table behave. I create a new function, partition function. I create a new schema and I create table which use the partition schema. And let's check the structure of the table. All that I want to mention in uh, the time that we have is that when we create partition table, you can actually notice behind the skin, the physical structure is that having two tables. And if you are using an old version of SQL Server, which is not enterprise uh, edition, so you can manage your data using separate tables, but partitioned tables give us the option to let the server manage the data for us. But behind the skin, it's like we had two tables, one for partition one, one for partition two. Uh, 
Okay. What is this here? Uh, well, case scenario. Uh, this is a question that was uh, raised in the forum, uh, in the MCN forum several years ago, and uh, I saw it in many other forums as well, uh, but I based on the one in the MSDN. Uh, this is a real life scenario. Someone uh, came to the forum and say, hey, I have a big table, uh, several millions of uh, rows. First of all, I told him that uh, several million, it's not big for a SQL server, but let's give it a side. And he said that he have a big int column. This column is not needed anymore. So the question is, uh, what is the best uh, way to uh, improve our performance when we do not need this column anymore. The main focus is about reclaim the size of the columns. Now I'm going to show you some uh, solutions that came in the forums. Several of those solutions solution came from expert. Uh, and when I came to the discussion, I just needed to say basically, oh, no, it's not correct. Uh, you need to understand what happened behind the skin and not only what the logical layer show us. So let's create a, our table and check the first option. The first option that people spoke about, let's drop the column. Makes sense. We will drop the column. We can reclaim the size. We already saw that this will not work. So here I alter the table and drop the column but you can notice that everything is still here. The data is here. It only marked the column as not in use. Uh, I will show you that the data is actually in the disk after I drop the column. This is very important. In the, uh, document, the official documentation several years ago, I saw that it is written uh, that this is action that you cannot revert. You cannot restore the data. This is a mistake. If you are in the level of uh, SQL Server internals, if you understand what happened behind the skin, or if you have a good uh, third party tool, then you can restore the data. As I will show you, the data is still on the disk. Uh, so I help to, uh, I had the honor to uh, uh, alter, to change the uh, document, the official documentation, uh, uh, and fix this uh, thing. Uh, now, the column that uh, I dropped is the column that includes the value of 999. This is the column that uh, I want to remove. In order to find this value on the disk, a uh, fast way during this meeting, uh, I will just check what I need to search in the binary data. So if I will check how SQL Server convert binary, uh, convert uh, the uh, in integer, big integer, in our case, into a binary, this is the value that we get. This is not the value that SQL Server actually stored on the disk. Do not confuse converting, will not give you, uh, not necessarily will give you the value as it is on the disk. In our case, we need to manipulate it a bit. Uh, this part is not part of the value, so this is all we need. And we can split it into bytes. SQL Server store the data uh, in a reverse order. So the actual value on the disk will be 0F first, then 27, then 0, 0, 0, 0. This is the value that we expect to find on the disk. Now you remember that we dropped this column. Let, let's find the page that include the data and prove to you that the data is still there. This is the data, and this is the value of the 999. You remember, this is the value. So dropping the column, do not delete the data, and this data will continue with us forever if we will not maintain the table. So this was not a good solution for uh, our uh, scenario. Another uh, solution that was uh, presented was, okay, 
uh, we cannot drop the column. It's, it will not reclaim the space. So let's update and change the value itself to zero. It was 999, for example, or uh, maybe 1 million or whatever. It was a big int. Let's change it to zero. I will not present any demo. This makes no sense. Uh, if you know uh, how SQL Server work and you listen to this uh, session, you already know that this is a fixed a data a type, so it's not important if the actual value is zero or a one million. The value that SQL Server, you, uh, the size that SQL Server used for the value is exactly the same. Another uh, solution idea that was presented by one of the top experts in the forum was presented as a question or idea. And it's very uh, nice to uh, mention. Uh, and he asked about, okay, what about uh, adding new row? This is related to the question that we had before. I told you that uh, I will come back to this. And this is exactly what he asked. He said, okay, uh, we cannot, uh, the data that already exists in the table will stay in the table. But what about new row that I will add? So the answer is what I said before. All the rows in the table must have the same, exact the same structure. So this empty play, uh, space that we have in the structure now will continue even for the new rows that we will add. So even if we will delete all the rows from the table and we will create, uh, we will insert new rows, all the new rows will include empty space in the middle of the record. So this is not a good solution. We will not reclaim any space. Another solution was to use a null instead of not null. Okay, this uh, makes sense because using null means that the server will not need to store the value uh, if it is null. So after it, we can update and change it to null. Uh, again, uh, the uh, data type is fixed. Uh, lens data type, so it makes no uh, change in our case. Uh, even if we will uh, use null, SQL Server will have this uh, empty space waiting for the value. Uh, I remind you that uh, we are not speaking about uh, express uh, columns. This is a separate uh, lecture. Uh, okay, I will not execute this because we don't have uh, time for everything. And another solution that was, uh, oh, just for the uh, sake of the lecture, I had you a, a demo of changing the null to not null to show you how this will behave. Okay, I must execute this, otherwise I will not have a... Uh, the rest of the uh, session, I'm using the table. Uh, so again, if I will make the opposite size, you can see that it will not help. Uh, the column still here. Uh, another solution that was suggested is to alter the column data type, not to change the, the value, but to alter the data a data type to a smaller data type. So uh, this is the original table. And what I'm doing now, I update all the values to one, so it will fit to tiny int. And then I alter the column to be tiny int instead of big int. Will this help us? The answer is no. This is how SQL Server works. Uh, if a SQL Server had specific size for the column, let's say a eight byte, and now we change it to a smaller data type, a SQL Server can use the same place. This is done in place, but it did not change the structure of all the rows. It simply a, a release, not from the disk, but a marked as not in use, part of the size in the row, but we are still using the exact same size. That may, this makes sense because SQL Server want to work fast. We don't want to create a new table to copy all the data 
only because we change the data type. We can maintain our table as we will see later on, and then we will fix all those issues, all this uh, complex structure. Uh, what will happen if we will change the size back to big int? Now, uh, my sense said that uh, this was big int. We change it to tiny int, but the space for the big int is still there. So SQL Server can now change the data type back, back to a big int and use the same place, right? Unfortunately, SQL Server do not do it like this. SQL Server do not examine the structure of the table when we are using the uh, alter to big int and what it actually do, add another new uh, a col a column in the physical structure. Now notice the leaf offset. This is actually a physical uh, position. This is a physical size on the disk. Before our last column was in offset, leaf offset, 32 byte. Now, after we change the data type to a bigger data type, SQL Server ignore the type that we had before and it create a new space. It add space to our record. This means that our table become bigger and we have six a physical column and we have a bigger table. The last column started 52. But what will happen if I will drop uh, the last column in the table? This take you back to our first demo, which I did not explain about the order of the columns. If I will drop the last column and then I will add another column, in this case, SQL Server can add the new column in the same position as the column that we dropped. So if the column that we drop is the last one, SQL Server can reclaim the space. So what is the solution for all this? We see our table become very complex behind the skin, bigger table, a performance reduce. The solution is to rebuild the table. Once you rebuild the table, SQL Server will fix everything and will create a clean structure for the table, but this is very heavy uh, action. This means that it need to move all the data physically to a, or copy the data to a different position and basically create a, a new table behind the skin. But you must remember, if you change your a table a structure, don't forget to rebuild the table. I'm sure that uh, once you will go home and you will examine your database, you might find out that even if you are expert and you maintain your database in the best way, you, you will probably find a lot of places where your tables is not well formatted and you have a lot of hidden columns and the tables are too big. And the best thing that you need to do is immediately rebuild the table if this is the case. So examine your physical structure, see if you need to do it, and if you need, rebuild the table. What is the time? Okay, we are over the time. I will just mention that we have a virtual column as part of the table structure as well. Uh, I assume that everyone here is uh, familiar with computed column. Computed column is a column that we create virtually uh, by uh, configuring the action uh, on other columns. So this is a way to add a computed column. If I will check, which I don't have time now, what is the physical structure after I add a computed column, I will not see any different because this is only a logical layer uh, information. If I will uh, check the columns in the logical layer, like simple users, then I will see that I have another column in the table. But physically, 
we will not see. We have only the original columns. Ronan, uh, I need to leave, uh, but uh, so I'm just going to disconnect and then uh, I will uh, leave to you to to finish off. But I want to <laughs> thank you so much. This was so useful information and uh, I I love that you did an old demo session. Thank you so much for coming to SQL Friday. Awesome. Uh, I have, as I said in the beginning, I have like uh, five more minutes uh, that we need uh, more time and then we will finish. Uh, just make yeah. sure that you leave the recording and you do not close the meeting by mistake. Absolutely. Uh, I hope that you will not close the meeting, so we will continue. Uh, so, uh, I spoke about what is known uh, regarding the virtual column, which is computed column, but what is not known is that we have undocumented, again, this is, you will not find any documentation about this, but behind the screen we have undocumented virtual columns, those three columns. Uh, row dump, yeah, this is the name, by the way, you must use this, I don't know how this is called in English, this sign, but you must use the name with this sign. This is part of the name. Uh, this uh, uh, virtual column includes information about the partition ID that uh, the whole uh, use. This uh, virtual co uh, column uh, gives us the physical uh, location of the column, but it presents it as binary uh, data, so it's not readable. And uh, this virtual column gives us the information about the physical location, but in a more readable way. Let's see what we have in our table. So, oops, I didn't create a table because we didn't have time. So let me create a table very fast. We must create it. Okay, any table, you can execute this and this is the information that you get. So this is the information about the partition, this information about the location, and this is the information about the location in a readable way. What we have here is the file number, then we have the uh, page number where this uh, row is stored, and then we have the uh, number of the row itself inside the page. So we have those three rows. And this is partition table, so we have more rows in the other partition in a different location. Uh, we have a accessory uh, function that we can use in order to manipulate, to uh, parse the information of those virtual columns. So this is a function that we can use, all undocumented and very useful. You see that I can get the information about the partition ID from this uh, not readable value using the function. And we have some more function that you can download the uh, code and uh, execute it after it. Uh, and uh, I want to go back to the order of column. Now we have all the information to understand what we had here. Why this behave so strange? Why the first time that we created the uh, a table, it was only 5,000 uh, pages. And the second time when I ch changed the order of the column, we needed to use the double size. The reason is related to what happened behind the skin. Uh, what I'm doing here, I drop the column. I drop the column by the name. I drop the column that name column one, and then I add another column. You remember that if a column that I dropped is the last one, then I can reuse the uh, place. And this is what happened. When column one was in the last position, like in this scenario, then when I dropped it and added another column, it used the same place. So in total, we did not need to make the table larger. But if the column one was not the last one, then when I added another column after I dropped it, we needed to add more space to the table. 
and the second uh, demo use exactly the same scenario. You see, I drop the column. Where is it? Here. I drop the column and I add another column. So I drop column one, I add column uh, uh, one again with char one. And then I add another column with char uh, 3000. If the column that I dropped was the last one, and now I add another column of 3000 a byte, so everything is okay, because in total it used the same space we don't have more than eight bytes. This is the maximum size of a row, a record in the disk. But if the column that I dropped wasn't the last one, and I now try to add 3,000 more bytes, it cannot work. It say, hey, listen, this is the size of the a new call, a row structure. This will not work. SQL Server cannot use this size and we got an error. So order of column is very important. Let's summarize going back to our presentation. Okay, so wait, uh, we are just at the end of the session. We have one more minute according to the time that uh, I planned. Uh, we have uh, several more, uh, more uh, tips that we can give in this time. Uh, so what we have done today, uh, I opened the session with the question, is order of column important? I first showed you uh, that uh, this is important in practical demo. Uh, next, I explained that SQL Server manage an undocumented layer, which I named it a physical layer. This layer is used for the uh, server itself, by the server internally. Uh, we saw that uh, the order of column can have a huge impact on performance. Moreover, it can uh, even be related to errors that uh, we might get. Uh, in order to understand this behavior, we dive into the uh, internal uh, undocumented uh, layer. Uh, we executed uh, several DDL action changing the table and we examine how uh, they, this changed the physical structure of the table. Uh, we saw that uh, changing the table impact the physical structure of the table and this might lead to a lot of unwanted and unused space behind the skin. Uh, for example, dropping the column did not really reclaim the space. Uh, the data is still uh, on the disk. In order to reclaim the space, in order to uh, clean the structure of the table, what we need to do, what we must to do is to rebuild the table. I did not have time to mention that there is another option. There is a command named dbcc clean a table uh, in order to reclaim the space related to dropped only variable length column, this can do the work. Uh, many times people ask me, uh, why should uh, they uh, waste their time in learning what is under the skins? My answer is that understanding the internals directly impact our ability to improve performance and reduce the cost it is not done for the sake of theoretical ideal idea. So this is very important to know, and I hope that uh, you find this session interesting and more important that uh, you understand that uh, it is practical information. You need to go to your databases and check what you actually have there behind the skin. I, I will publish a link to download the code uh, so you can test uh, this demo yourself. I recommend to follow me on Facebook. There uh, you can find the, the link that I will publish. Uh, if you have any additional question, feedback, or you just want to say hi, then uh, you are welcome to contact me on Facebook. Uh, a special thanks to Magnus, who had to leave earlier. Uh, and above all, I want to thank you uh, for participating in my session. Uh, have a great day 
you can still ask something in the chat if you want. I'm here, so let me check the chat. Uh, thanks a lot. I always get uh, this uh, feedback, but my request to you is uh, don't uh, feel bad to give bad feedback as well. Uh, my only way to uh, improve myself to be better uh, speaker is by knowing what I need to do better. So if you have any idea, you can uh, uh, send me it uh, in private on Facebook and every, if everything waits so awesome. Uh, if I missed any question, so again, you can ask me on Facebook. I would like to watch the session again more. <laughs> OK, uh, it is recorded. I hope so. So uh, you will be able to see it. Uh, what will happen when we have SQL Server 2019? And oh, I mentioned it. SQL Server 2019 uh, have a new feature for NTFS 8. Uh, it will behave uh, different. Oh, th this is exactly, uh, I, I answered this question in the demo. This is exactly what I showed you. Uh, I showed you that I changed and voucher to voucher. It's an awesome question because I already plan to answer it. Uh, and that's all. So again, thank you a lot for coming to this session and uh, we'll see you in the uh, other uh, event. Bye bye for now. I actually don't know how to stop the recording. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Magnus is not here, I don't know. I, I, I guess it. Magnus stops the recording when he stops the meeting. Okay, so we are so really good, good to job, stop Jonah. Recording. Really good. Thanks a lot, everyone. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I wrote some comments up there. So so, so the, the row part of the, the, uh, the, the, the physical location is, is the slot. So it's page, uh, file, page, slot. Again, the physical yeah. location. So, so, yeah, file, page, and slot. So the row is called a slot in the data page. A slot is the physical location of the record. This of the record, yes. Data. Yeah, so that's the third. That's the third number in, in the physical location for the row or the record. Yes, we, we saw it. Uh, when yeah. I execute a DBCC page, I show you that uh, I'm uh, checking the first slot, with this, which is slot zero. Yes. And I'm uh, counting from zero and yeah. Up. Yeah. So 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 yeah. So 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 the zero there is it, called the slot. It, it's the slot for the record. Yes. Yeah. But this does not tell you any information about the physical structure. No, this no, no, gives no. you information only about the physical data on the disk. Yeah. yeah. But you don't so, know so the you, structure. You, you, you you have, know. You, you, yeah, you, you, you have cannot those. understand why the data is like this if you manipulated the table with a, yeah. a like dropping columns. It's not drop, it's there. If you will yeah. check a Paul Rendell a, a lecture, about DBCC paid, for example. So he explained about the slot and everything, but he yeah. didn't uh, show you what happened when you drop a column. Yeah. He tell you, okay, this is the structure of the. Uh, uh, let me. I'm showing yeah. my screen. So, so, so I, 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 I know that part. So, so, so yeah, uh, it okay. was just the, the, the so terminology this, for, for, this for is, the uh, third what, uh, number. Confused. Uh, in uh, most lectures, people tell you, okay, this is what you have behind the skin, and this fit our uh, structure, but this is not correct. If you already manipulate the table and you dropped a column, you added column, and etc., the structure on the disk will not fit the logical uh, structure that you have. It will fit the physical structure, which yeah. you can uh, see only using those uh, undocumented uh, uh, tools that I show in this session. Yeah, so so I just wanted to share the, the terminology used for the third part of the location. Yeah, again, this is true 
only for the for the location on the disk. This does not relate to the physical structure. No, no, no. So, I'm, yeah, yeah. So, 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 uh, Ron and I, I, I know that that part. I do the same sessions myself. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Also, so, 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 so this was this just the, the, if we are looking in the readable format of the physical location, you you have file colon page colon slot. Yes. Slot slot for the 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 storage part of the page for the record. Yes. Yeah. So exactly. so the, the 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 right name is slot for that part of the location. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you, so you, you never said that during the session, so I wrote a comment about it. But they're really good session. I really love your demos. Awesome. They are really good. There's a lot more, but we didn't have time. Originally, yeah. this session uh, is best for 90 minutes, uh, but uh, one hour is great, and if I need, I can do it in 20 minutes as well. Yeah. It only depends on how many demo we show. Yeah. Okay, so, so yeah, you, see you, you you're, next you're doing, time. You're doing good. You you are doing it relaxed, and that's really good. Thanks. Uh, bye bye for now. Bye bye.